So we are now going to start our landscape painting. Step one in doing this painting is we're going to draw a very, very basic landmark drawing so that we isolate and identify the most basic contours that are in here, which is going to be this hill, mountains in the distance, the line of these trees on the left, and we're, we might even put a little suggestion of this in here. But in our photograph, we see some white clouds way in the distance. We see mountains way in the distance. But we're not going to, uh, we're not going to allow ourselves to become prisoners of the photograph. We want to be inspired by the photograph, but not prisoners of it. To start our painting, we're going to take a little bit of white. We're going to take some blue. And you'll notice that I've put some cool red. This is Thalo Red Rose. Thalo Red Rose is a Grumbacher product, but you can use permanent rose. You can, you can use alizarin crimson. You can use permanent alizarin. The thing is, I want you to use a, a cool, a cool transparent red, a, a cool transparent red with the blue, which gives you somewhat of a purple. Now, why do I do my drawing with a purple? Well, in the landscape, this purple is going to enhance everything we do around it. It's not going to compete. It's going to enhance it. I'm going to take and just very, very lightly show a line. Now I'm going to take a look. I'm going to make, bring this line up a little bit above the, the center line of my canvas. I'm going to raise this up. In the photograph, those mountains back in the distance are a little closer to the center of the photograph than I want it to be. So I'm going to raise this up a little bit. So there's my mountain way back in the distance. And there's going to be some ridges that I'm going to include in a couple of places. Here is the, this edge of this woods that comes down to about here. So there, there's going to be a woods in there. And it doesn't have to be a solid line. Just a, a landmark. And then there's going to be a little bit of a tree that's coming in here. And then you might want to suggest the edge of this shadow that comes down here. Now this, this main tree right here, we're not even going to put it in. Because we're not going to put it in now. We're going to put it in when everything behind this tree is done. We do not want to try to do the sky around that tree. We don't want to do the sky and the mountains in the distance around that tree. We want to get everything behind these trees done before we put those trees in. So we work from the farthest point away and come forward. Okay, we've done our basic drawing. And now it's time to start painting. And when we start painting, the first thing we want to do is we want to get rid of that purpley blue that we started with so that it doesn't contaminate with what we're going to start, uh, begin our sky with. The farthest point away from us right now is not the mountain, not the mountain, but the sky beyond the mountain. And that sky is going to be lighter and warmer than the sky that's straight above. Remember what I said about the marriage between Father Sky and Mother Earth? If the sky out there at 3 o'clock on the horizon is lighter and warmer that's where Father Sky and Mother Earth are married they come together there and in our picture we've got some clouds in there we're not going to worry about the clouds to start with we'll put the clouds in tomorrow or at a later date we're just going to put the sky in we're going to start with a light warm gray and work into a slightly darker cooler sky as we go from the horizon up this is the farthest away and for the purposes of demonstration we're going to say that this is closer to us than that so we're going to go from light warm sky blue to a darker cooler sky blue look what we have here light sky going to darker sky and all we need to do is to gray it out what happened when we started with the sky blue and put a little burnt sienna in it, it grayed it out slightly. I'm going to start with a good, fairly good sized pool of white. I'm going to take a butterfly kiss of burnt sienna, a butterfly kiss, not a lot, and I'm going to take a butterfly kiss of blue, 
And I am going to get a light warm gray. Just for the horizon, I'm going to take a half of a butterfly kiss of red, that cool red, and I'm going to check that color. And I kind of like that color. So we use white, butterfly kiss of burnt sienna, butterfly kiss of blue, and a half of a butterfly kiss of that red. I'm going to put just a little more burnt sienna in this mixture because I want Mother Earth to be a little bit more obvious back here. And I'm going to put a layer of color following the contour of that mountain. It follows the contour on the lower side, but on this upper side, I'm going to make it kind of a straight line, a little bit of a straight line across there. Now, what were we doing over here? We were doing, we started from the white and went down to the blue. We turn it upside down and we see we can start at the light horizon and go to the deeper sky color. So how are we going to do that? Well, here's my pool that I put in here. Nice pool. Now we want to use a fair amount of paint here. We don't want to put paint down and then spread it, spread it, spread it, spread it, spread it. We want to load our brush, put some paint down, grab some more paint, put some more paint down, so we have a, enough paint to work with. We don't want to throw it on there like we own the company, but we want to throw it on there like we're not timid either. So now the, I used X amount of paint for my horizon color. Now about the amount of paint I just put on the painting, I'm going to take that, get an equivalent amount, put it in my pool and take some more blue. That's going to be my next square or strata of color as I put on the paint that's going to become the sky in my painting. And I'm not going to get an ulcer over going over my drawing. All right? So there's my next square going up this grid or my next strata doing the sky. Now take, a take about the amount of paint that I just expended on the painting, put it in my pool, grab a little bit more blue, now, you'll notice that the only place I put a butter, half of a butterfly kiss of red and the only place I used the burnt sienna was on the horizon where Mother Earth and Father Sky came together to produce a light warm gray. Now I'm just doing strata where I'm going from that light warm gray and I'm progressively going to a darker and cooler sky. Now, same amount of paint that I just expended, more blue, into that pool, and here's my last strata up here, and there's no magic number. How many, oh, somebody's going to say, how many strata? Well, on one painting, it may be just, depending on the design of the painting, it just may be two strata, because I put my horizon way up. On another kind of painting, if my horizon is way down, I may have six strata. But the idea is to have a transition from the light warm to the darker cooler. This is what I want you to work on, on your painting. Start light and warm, going to the darker cooler. Now, I'm not done yet. When you get to this point, do not, do not clean out your paintbrush. Do not clean off your mixing surface because we are going to be using this atmospheric color to get the color of the mountain back in the distance. So do the sky now. We have this color right here. This was the last color we, we put up here. Watch what happens if I just take this color that we just used up here, if I take that color and, by golly, that makes that mountain look kind of blue back there. Well, what are we known as? We are known as the Smoky Mountains. If I want to make this mountain back here look like it's really a long way away, I use this atmospheric color. But this atmospheric color is just not quite right because it's not showing Mother Earth enough. So I'm going to take a little bit of Mother Earth, add Mother Earth to my mix, a little bit of more blue, and a touch, a butterfly kiss of this cool red, 
I've added Mother Earth, a little more blue, and a little touch of that red. Now let's take a look at that color. That's a pretty good color for a mountain that's 15 to 20 miles away. Because we're looking through a massive amount of atmosphere to get back there. I'm going to put my first ridge of color there. And now, that's, that's that ridge of color. Now I'm going to take a little more Mother Earth and a little bit more blue. I'm going to take a touch of green. Just a touch of green. A little more blue. And I'm going to come underneath there. This is going to be another range, another ridge. And that's as far as I want to go right now. So you're going to use your sky blue, darken it just a little bit with bur uh, more blue, a butterfly kiss of burnt sienna, and a tiny butterfly kiss of that red to make an atmospheric gray and then we put just a touch more burnt sienna, touch more blue, touch of green in it to get that second ridge. And now do that and then stop. Don't do any more because we're going to do something before we progress. What we're going to do is we're going to do some blending. And we're going to be doing some softening of edges to put a professional quality to what we've already done. We're going to start thinking in terms of how we handle our edges. Now we've got strata. Light strata, a little darker, a little cooler, a little darker, a little cooler, a little darker, a little cooler. And there shouldn't be a sharp borderline between these. So what we're going to do is we're going to blend these edges and in the process make the sky look a little bit sparkly. This big brush, holding my big brush with three fingers holding it flat or somewhat flat against this, the, the uh, painting, I'm going to start with a very short vertical stroke where I'm going to, I don't want to reach into the mountain, I want to reach down close to the mountain. And now in a somewhat random pattern, I'm going to start blending my edges. I'm going to bring this light warm color up into the darker cooler and I'm going to go over every one of those horizontal brush strokes that I put onto my, initially put onto my painting just to apply paint to my painting. Clean off the excess paint and I'm going to soften the edge there. Now that's what I've done with the sky. Now I'm going to go into the atmosphere of this mountain where I'm very, very carefully going to reach up just slightly into the sky above my mountain I do not want my mountain to look like it was cut out of one piece of material and glued onto my painting. I may change the contour of my mountain a little bit as I do this, but I want to set the mountain into the painting. Now there was a little oops here in my drawing, so I'm going to put that in like that. I know that my the trees and bushes over here are going to encroach here which is fine so now with a very very short little brush stroke I first reached up into the mountain and then drew the uh, just above the mountain and I drew the sky in a short stroke very short stroke I drew the sky down into the mountain after I soften that entire edge I can come back over here and load my brush with some of this color and soften that edge so that I have a soft edge now I bring this down and now I'm going to go back to this color that I ended with and I'm going to restate this ridge that I put in here. I have this color on my palette. I'm going to restate this ridge so it's a very, very subtle ridge that's between me and that mountain. Do you see that ridge there now? Very subtle. And I'm going to drag that down just a little bit more. And now I want, before we do any more ridges, I want you to soften the sky and soften that distant mountain and that first, that second ridge.
clean your brush out thoroughly, then do the softening of your sky, and then after you do the softening of your sky, clean your brush out thoroughly, and then do the softening of the edge of your mountain. Okay? Mountain and that second ridge. So we don't want to contaminate the, the sky with the mountain color that we just did, and we don't want to contaminate the mountain with the sky color that we just did. We want to clean between doing the sky and doing the mountain. Here's my pool that I've been working with, and I now have the farthest ridge that's way in the distance. I have a ridge that's a little closer. So now I'm going to go to Mother Earth, Father Sky. I don't want to get too dark too fast. Now one of the tendencies that a lot of students have is they go a little too dark too fast, and, and, and they end up with really, really dark ridges. So I take some white, burnt sienna, blue, and I'm resupplying my pool. And I can get a pretty good ballpark color based on what I've done in the past. And now this is going to be a little darker. That's a little darker than I want it to be. So I'm going to take a little bit of light, white, and lighten it up some. Take a little bit more green, a little bit more blue. What colors have I been using? White, burnt sienna, blue, and a touch of green. Not real complicated, but we have to work with it until we get a value, a range of lightness and darkness that fits into the environment. I'm going to lighten this up a little bit more. I'm going to lighten it up with some white until I get a value that fits into the environment rather nicely. Now, I like that value. I like that color. So now this is going to be another ridge that I'm going to put in here. And I'm going to let that ridge inter you know, go overlap this back ridge here. And now I'm going to start that ridge down here so it has somewhat of a diagonal effect on my painting. And I'm going to bring that ridge down. And notice how I applied my paint. I applied my paint. This ridge is getting closer to me. So I applied that paint with my vertical stroke right off the bat. So I'm not going to have to go back and work on that now. It's already got that vertical stroke and it's got that soft edge. Now, I want another ridge in there. So how do I do it? Guess what? Burnt sienna, blue, and green. Now I'm going to put a little more green in this one. I'm going to put another ridge. Let's see, this ridge I'm going to have coming down from this direction. That ridge is coming down from that opposite direction. Now I'm going to be putting trees in here, but I want to put a little mark of that here so I can have some holes in my trees. And when I have holes in my trees, it's not going to be a sky sh color showing through here. It's going to be a color showing from the ridge that's in back. Now, another ridge. Burnt sienna. And this time I'm going to use some raw sienna. Now I'm going to use some more green. And the raw sienna is going to have an effect of warming my green a little bit more. So I can come with now a ridge because of the warmer color. What happens with warm colors? Warm colors come forward. They come towards us. So I'm going to warm this up, put a little touch of green with it, and I'm creating now a ridge that is even closer to me. And I'm going to bring that down where those things are going to be there. Now look at those ridges, how they're forming up. And now there's, uh, let's see, on the photograph, there's some trees that are right down just over the crest of this hill here. So watch what I do this time. This time, instead of using burnt sienna, I'm going to use the raw sienna, a little touch of yellow, a little touch of this yellow, and I'm going to be giving you some of that yellow. And now here is another green that's going to be our foundational green for some 
foliage that is going to be closer. Now we're going to work with this a little bit more. I put that green in like that. And now I want to show, because this is as close as it is, I'm going to put a little darker green at the base of those trees. How did I do it? Well, how did we do it on our, our, our thing here? We used our raw sienna went dark, but to get a really dark color, we used burnt sienna in the dark green. So I'm going to take some burnt sienna into my pool with the dark green, and I'm going to get a dark that I can place at the base of this, this section of woods right here, right along the base of it, and I will be able to come back later. I, I can come back later and put the highlights on the top of those trees down there. Now I'm just going to soften my edges and take a look. We have set the environment of our landscape with varying values of color. 